Today we're going to go over Madame Cirrus, one of the OGs who came out around the same time that Brachus and Frankie came out. When I first got her, I was so excited. This was back during COVID when she was still like one of the queens of Arena. She was just epic, like in its actual sense, because nowadays you have a bunch of epic champions who aren't really that epic. But back in the day, before Sheep was a thing, Madame Cirrus was just the GOAT, the absolute GOAT. A legendary in epic skin. And the reason was this move right here, her A3, which removes all buffs. It was a complete buff strip from the entire opposite enemy team, placing a decreased attack with a decreased defense on all enemies for two turns. Not only were we taking everything off, but we were also making the opposite team extremely weak. Her A2 was also something that could not just remove but steal and then place a block buffs on all allies if any buff was stolen which most of the time it was and then places a true fear on enemies who have a buff stolen so true fear is basically the same thing as fear but instead of just missing a turn you also place their skill on cooldown so it's as if though they used their skill but they didn't use their skill so annoying to have to deal with but so nice to have on your team Places a shield on this champion, 10% of their max HP at the start of her turn. If she has a shield on and she's attacked, there's a 30% chance of placing fear on the attacker. And nowadays, you don't really see Madame Ceres in arena. On Reddit, people will even talk about her. This guy waited over a year to pull her, obtained her during CVC. Is she power crept? Is she good? General PvE, she's still top tier. I think so too. For arena, she's been fucked hard up the ass by Polymorph. The way she looks, I don't blame Polymorph one damn bit. Build Ceres with some resist and Polymorph becomes less of an issue unless you're facing a six star Polymorph. Still one of the best debuffers for Arena, especially, especially because buff strip has become way more so necessary with stone skin. Yes, the way that stone skin works, it's a 50-50 chance to have any effect take place or not. I don't have her built anymore. I would you know what, let me just... Alright, so I would take this, more accuracy here, more accuracy here, and you could take Evil Eye to push back turn meter, there's nothing wrong with that, that's a good choice. I like Cycle of Magic. Then we're going to take Sniper to increase the chance of placing any of the debuffs. 40%, booked up to 50. But with the Sniper Mastery, it's 55. And it's going to be 50, 35, 25 respectively. And then 40% chance with the Sniper Mastery. So of course we're going to take it. And then we can take Master Hexer. We're going to take Eagle Eye for extra accuracy because I don't think there's anything that's better here. You're not going to build it out for damage take extra res we're definitely going to be building up with res this time because of polymorph being a thing we're going to take a chance to debuff i do want to take damage mitigation crit hits block debuffs more damage here and we'll take counter attacks before heaven cast got the nerf which i understand why they did it because they need mythical champions to have more value because mythical champions have chances to ignore a champion's resistance a certain percentage of a champion's resistance so they changed heaven cast to do more damage instead of ignoring a percentage of resistance so now what do we do instead of heaven cast what do i put on my debuffer you know i don't really know i mean she doesn't have an aura so we're not going to take commanding presence i think chain breaker could be good that's what i've been using on some of my debuffers cruelty wouldn't be too bad for a2 i guess not a whole lot of options i think we're just going to go with chain breaker to have a chance to remove any debuffs that are on this champion so we'll take that get a little extra stats here as well. so in 2024 how should you build madam Ceres? we are looking for mostly accuracy and resistance, especially in this day and age with Polymorph, we want to make sure it's high on resistance, accuracy, and speed. HP and defense would be nice to have. We'll set those as second priorities. When it comes to sets, I like to have Immortal on her just to get that extra healing to help with survivability. It's really annoying if you ever have to 1v1 a, a Madame Ceres. And I'm mostly thinking about how I was way back in 2019, 2020 when I was stuck in like gold or gold three classic arena i couldn't do it i remember going up against madame saracies that had immortal region on them and they just wouldn't die because you know, shields are also pretty op okay and finally we came to the conclusion finally built out i put some glyphs i did a little ascension on her here are the pieces of gear we're focusing on accuracy res speed and survivability oh wait, i didn't want to use speed glyphs just because i 
basically have none. HP, nothing wrong with little HP. We don't want the flats. We got flats on both. Nothing wrong with extra HP because again, the more HP she has, the bigger the shield for total stats. Again, 56k HP, a little over 4k defense. 249 speed, she could go faster. And over just about 420 plays it for resistance and accuracy. So the way that she would want to use Madam Cirrus is basically as a setup debuffer. For an example, try this team here. They're going to go first, of course. Maybe he's down, see how she was able to resist this. Now Armand is going to go. He's in supersonic. I'm going to try and sheep Brawla. But then Adam Ceres is going to place her deep, deep attack. That proc. And now we're going to drop Trunda's um, A3. But, you know, we don't have increased attack, so maybe that's what I'm missing here. So let's go ahead and try to bring in somebody attack here all right so somebody with increased attack let's go ahead oh here let's bring a grand oak padre again nice combination to have together all right a grand oak padre goes first because i haven't built fast and then our mons goes he does his thing playing champion and now madam saris is going to be able to decrease the deep landed everywhere let's get rid of Crixia's Pretty much an auto ban here. So we're gonna get rid of Crixia. And looks like we're screwed in terms of this, but we're gonna take the increased accuracy. I'm worried about Tormund activating Mortu's passive. But we'll see. Maybe because of the increased accuracy, we're gonna be able to remove his stone skin. Uh, I know we're putting their skills on cooldown for sure. Except, you know, mythical champions can't have their skills put on cooldown, I'm learning. So we're kind of screwed in that aspect. Fine. Fine, okay. So he's trying to aim down on my... So let's see if we can... Okay, so we do remove Ortu Macabre's debuff. And let's actually focus on Pytheon. So any debuffs that are going to be placed on us will now be placed on Pytheon. Not want him to cleanse. And we want to make sure that we get rid of him as a reviver as well. So I think he's got like one or two more turns before he's going to have his luck or his um, stuff back. So let's do this. We saw that activate. Um, oh, if we can provoke or two. There we go. Okay, so Nuke Torment's coming through. Push back Pytheon. Try to not let him take him. And I think we can clean. We can oh, say queen we can clean sweep here yeah so madam sarith sarith <laughs> madam therith madam sarith's removing stone skin was integral to this fight i would say you know granted he is level 96 but homie came through with two mythical champions and that's the thing like whenever i go into live arena i'm always ambivalent about fighting people who are at lower levels because it's like one if i beat somebody who's a lower level it's like dude you beat somebody but they're a lower level or if i lose to somebody who's a lower level then it's like dude he completely demolished me as a lower level if you're going through the dungeons you're going to want to have somebody that places because of my audio issues i decided to just record over this recording and basically what i'm talking about here is having somebody who places an aoe decrease defense is going to significantly help you out when it comes to clearing the waves so you can see here madam saris in the first round placed the aoe decrease defense and we smashed through we cut a swath through that first wave pretty easily but here without decreased defense on the entire squad my champions aren't doing so much damage and this second wave is taking a lot longer than needed to be. Luckily here we got the decreased defense down on the dragon. And it's just a matter of time before we completely smack him all the way down. The other thing that's going to help here is the decreased attack. So when Madam Saris does drop the decreased attack, the dragon isn't going to be doing so much damage to us. So having decreased defense, and then of course if you can get weaken on for extra damage, is imperative. That would have killed me right there, or at least killed Shamael if I hadn't had that decrease attack on. So if you were lucky enough to pull a Madam Saris, then congratulations to you. But somebody who's a little bit more accessible, who isn't a void epic, is Stagnite. 